Hello, and welcome to another Halloween makeup look. This time it is a glam forest fairy look. And I think of all of the Halloween looks I've done over the years, this one is actually uh, more doable and more practical because you could just, you know, put on a fairy costume with some wings with this look and you're actually good to go. So, uh, yeah, this is one of my more reasonable Halloween looks I've done in recent years. So, I hope you enjoy! Alright, like always, we are starting off with the prosthetics application. This time, it actually only took me 20 minutes to apply all the prosthetics, whereas in my uh, Flying Dutchman Korean inspired look, it took me an hour. But the prosthetics were a lot smaller and more straightforward pieces, so the application process was a lot faster. But it is the same as in my last video. I use Prozade and I put that on the back of the prosthetic itself and then I put some Prozade on the part of my skin which will have the prosthetic. I let it dry a bit and I stick the prosthetic on and then I use acetone to take off the outer area of the prosthetic and blend any edges into my skin. Standard stuff, nothing complicated. Honestly, beginners can probably do this if it's not a super complicated prosthetic piece. It's relatively easy to use. I've actually come to really enjoy utilizing prosthetics in makeup looks. I don't really do it often, but I kind of want to do it more because I think it's really fun and I just think it's a really cool art form. We are now getting into the painting portion of the look and I was not basing my prosthetic painting application on anything realistic. I was looking at a reference photo, but making things look hyper-realistic when it comes to makeup is not my strong suit. I, you know, try it to the best of my abilities, and I try to use uh, realistic colors, and I try to make it, you know, look textured in a realistic way, but it is not my strong suit, so I do the best I can. So I am using my Neveron Bruise Pro Color Ring and I'm taking the brown in that ring because it is a cool toned brown and I am applying that all over the mushrooms on my forehead. It is a bit dark. Going back, if I were to redo anything, I probably would have mixed it maybe with a little bit of my concealer just to lighten it up a tad. But once I paint all the little mushroom pieces brown. I then go in with a white and I'm painting the edges and underneath of the mushrooms uh, because, you know, based on my very limited knowledge of mushrooms, they normally have like the darker top and then it's a lighter underneath area of the mushroom and the stem is normally lighter. So I was making the underneath area of the prosthetic lighter with the white and then I was kind of doing this like speckled kind of thing on top with the white as well and throughout the whole thing I'm kind of blending things out and trying to make it look as realistic as I possibly can even though I don't think it ended up looking super realistic but you know I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying my best um but yeah I just go back and forth until I'm happy with the end result and really I'm just using two colors here, the cool tone brown and then a white. Um, and I just keep painting and applying until I'm happy with the end product. And right after I was finished painting this forehead prosthetic piece, I then went in with some lash glue and I glued pieces of moss around the mushroom prosthetic 
Typically, I probably would have saved this for the end, but I kind of wanted to see what it would look like before I painted the other prosthetic pieces. Next, I'm going to be painting the cheek mushrooms. And for the stems of these mushrooms, I went in with the same cool toned brown that I used to paint the other mushrooms, but I didn't want it to be as dark, so I did add white over top of the base brown color because I wanted it to be lighter even though it still ended up being a bit too dark. I think I would also go back and add some concealer mixed in with the brown to lighten it up a bit. And for the top of the mushrooms, I'm basing this off of those red spotted mushrooms. I wanted a contrasting color to the browns and greens I was using, so that's why I decided to paint these mushrooms red. So I'm going in with the red from the Maroon Pro Color Ring, and it's quite bright, uh, so I also mixed in a bit of my concealer to mute the red color a little bit and, and tone it down. And then I'm taking a white and going around and lining the edges of the mushroom in white. And then I'm also painting the underneath area white because, you know, from my limited knowledge of these types of mushrooms, the underneath part is a like white or beige color. So I'm just using white and I'm taking another brush and just trying to blend things in to make it seamless. And then going in and adding some of the fake moss. I continued adding the moss directly after I was finished painting the prosthetic piece because it did help me visualize how the finished look would come together. So I think in this instance it was more helpful for me to apply those extra topical pieces directly after I was done painting instead of at the end. You'll also see me turn my mirror around like this quite a bit just because I had a hard time seeing the back of the prosthetic because it was, a, you know, the way it was sitting on my cheek. I couldn't really see it out of my peripheral vision. And now I'm going in with white to add the spots on top of the mushroom. And I'm actually using a, a nail art dotting tool to do this quite convenient and I have them sitting on my makeup desk for some reason so I'm just using that to add the dots. Next I am going in and doing my eye look. I actually ha didn't really have a clear idea of what I wanted to do for the eyes. I knew I wanted to use the olive green color in the At For Sight Colourpop palette uh, by Rob Beauty Christie. So I knew the color palette I wanted to do, but not really the eye shape or the specific type of eye look I wanted to do. So I was kind of winging it as I was going, and I decided to do a halo eye of sorts. With my hooded eyes, halo eyes don't really work that well. So that's why you'll see later, I kind of go ham with the glitter in the center of the eye because, you know, with my hooded eyes, once I open my eyes, you can't really see the lid. So everything that I'm putting on the lid <laughs> doesn't really matter. I just blend it out a lot. There's a lot of blending going on. This clip was probably actually 10 minutes long in reality because I was just sitting there blending away. So I'm just taking that olive green shade in the At Foresight palette and just blending the shit out of it <laughs> and taking it up above my crease. Again with hooded eyes, I always tend to take things up above my crease so you can actually see it when my eyes are open. And I'm going back and forth with the like muted mauve color and the olive green color in the At Foresight palette and just making sure all the edges are really blended out. And then going in with the shimmery gold in the At For Sight palette, putting that on my inner corners. And then I'm taking a glitter from this Lemonhead Glitter Compact that my best friend got me for my birthday. And this had a like green shift to it. So I thought it was the perfect color choice for this look. And I am just going ham with the glitter because, you know, once my eyes are open, it's harder to see the glitter on the lid. So I'm bringing it 
above the lids and also on the inner corner. And then I'm taking a white uh, liner and I am doing this kind of like wing shape underneath my eyes because I, since this is a fairy look of sorts, I wanted to have an element in the eye makeup that mimicked wings. So that's why I did this wing shape underneath my eye for a bit of dramatic effect. And then I'm going in and adding glitter to my eyebrows because why not? And I kind of wanted more moss on my face. So I am adding more moss around my eyebrows and also to the side of my neck area over here. I think I just, I just wanted, I didn't want it to look as empty as it was looking, which is why I'm kind of sitting back and going, all right, where, where can I add more moss? And now I am taking my NYX blush and taupe and adding some contour and I am bringing this all over my nose and cheek area as well because I will be adding freckles and I like that you know sun-kissed kind of look with freckles so I'm going in with the ColourPop freckle pen and adding those freckles and then I put a little bit more of the contour shade on top of the freckles and like pat it down so they don't stick out so much and probably one of my favorite lipsticks is hazel from black moon cosmetics i love this color so much but i don't really wear it often because i don't really wear lipstick often that much but i'm going in with hazel because it is such a beautiful olive green shade and it goes perfectly with the vibe of this this forest fairy look Finishing touches now, I'm adding black cream gel liner to my top lids, and then I'm adding a, a copper shade to my lower lids, and this is the final look. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I wanted to do something glam as a juxtaposition to the Flying Dutchman crew look, and also just because I don't really do like glam makeup anymore um so yeah this is my fun forest fairy halloween look and i hope you enjoyed